Hello there, science friends, and welcome once again to Photoshop for the Scientist. Thanks for being here. Now, I know it's been a while since I've released a video, but I was in the middle of a move, so that's all done now. And we're back to some Photoshop action. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make an animated GIF or a GIF, or however you prefer to say it, out of an MRI. So if you just had an MRI of your brain or anywhere really in your body, uh, and you've got a bunch of DICOM files, which uh, let's have a look here. So DICOM file stands for Digital Imaging and Communications in Medicine. And at least where I work, which is at a hospital, uh, whenever we do our MRIs, we save them off as DICOM files. And I'm pretty sure that that's pretty standard anywhere you go. So if you've had your MRI and you have these files available to you, you can actually import them into Photoshop and play around with them. And that's what we're going to be doing today and possibly in the next video if I get around to making it. So first off, we need to go up to File, and we want to say Scripts, and we want to say Load mul Multiple DICOM Files. I'm going to navigate to my folder with my DICOM files. Down here, I'm going to use this one that says Use This One. Yours will probably be named something different. And then I'm going to say OK, and what Photoshop is going to do is uh, import all of these individual files, I think there's about 200 of them, into a stack in my Layers panel here. So we'll just give it a minute. It should be nearly done. Any second now. There we go. And you can see here we've got a whole bunch of layers uh, at different levels of the brain here. I should say this is not my brain. Uh, this is a brain of somebody else. Not that it really matters, I guess. But anyways, uh, so we've got uh, image number 200 up here and number 1 on the bottom. So they've imported in the reverse order, so I'm going to switch them around. So I'm going to select the bottom layer, scroll up to the top, hold shift and select the top layer, and then I'm going to go up to here, the layer option, and say arrange, and go to reverse. So let me start 1 to 200. And just a little side tip here, if you did want to kind of cycle through all of these layers one at a time to look at them, uh, what you can do is if you hold Alt and click this eyeball here, we'll just select this one layer for visibility. And now if you hold left, uh, sorry, Alt and then left square bracket, uh, you can sort of just cycle your way down uh, one layer at a time. And we can see this beautiful brain reveal itself. And I'm not going to go all the way because it'll take forever. Anyways, if you're happy with that, you can then hold Alt again and click this little eyeball a couple times, and that will make all the layers visible. And so there's a few things I want to do here before we start creating this GIF or GIF. Yeah, I'm just going to go with GIF from now on. Deal with it. Uh, so I want to go from one side of the head down to the other side of the head. Um, but then I want to sort of bounce back from this side back to the other side. So what I'm going to do is select all of these layers by shift click into the top and just saying layer duplicate layers and I'll say OK. And so we see now all of our copies are at the top and all of our originals start down here. Um, but I want it to sort of bounce back and forth. So what's happening now between this layer and this layer is just going back to the other side. So I'm going to have to reverse all of these layers which is not hard to do as we've already done it. So I'll just shift click them all and I will say layer, arrange, and reverse. So now we can see, if we go up, uh, we have 199, 200, and then 200. And this will just ensure that we sort of bounce from one side to the other. Okay, so the next thing we want to do in terms of making this sort of animation through the brain, we want to go up to window and select, what do we want here? We want timeline. And then we're going to click this button here that says Create Frame Animation. And then we're going to go to this little hamburger menu and say Make Frames from Layers. And so now Photoshop is going to take all of these layers, of which I guess there are 400, or two copies, or a copy of 200 layers, and import them into this timeline here. And we can see straight away, if we click this Play button here, we've got our little animation. And let's just watch it sort of going all the way to the other side of the head. Dun, dun, dun. Maybe I'll put in some music here. That'll make it a little more entertaining. And that's the end of that. 
So one thing I did notice as I was cycling through all of these is that there is a slight pause as it bounces from one side to the other, and that is because we have this duplicated image here at uh, 200 and 201, and this is where uh, I duplicated the layers. And I don't want it to pause here, so what I'm going to do is just delete this duplicated layer here, and that should do it. Yep, so we'll take a quick look. Yep, just a nice quick transition. I also know that once this is looping back and forth, actually I'm going to set this from once to forever, um, I know that it's going to be looping back and forth and I'm going to have the same sort of duplication uh, pause because my first layer and last layer are the same. So I'm going to delete my last layer as well. And then that's really all there is to it. Right now it's set to zero seconds, which means it's, or each frame is going to show for 0, 0.00 seconds, which obviously is not possible, but that just means it's going to go no delays or as quickly as possible. Um, let's first, let's see what that looks like before we make any changes. So to save this off as an actual animated GIF, or GIF, I said GIF, come on, get it together. Uh, we want to go up to File, and we want to say Save At, oh, dang it, nope. We want to go up to File, and we want to say Export, and we want to say Save for Web Legacy. It's going to bring up this gigantic dialog box, uh, most of which you're probably not going to be able to see. But I'm going to drag the important bits over here. And we want to make sure that GIF is selected from this drop-down. And we don't really need to worry about much of this stuff. Uh, what I will say is that I'm going to drag this over here. Uh, well, you might not even be able to see it, but if you go sort of straight down here, it, there is some little information that says, oh, can I resize this? I can. Brilliant. Uh, you'll see here um, that this file is going to be 18 megabytes, uh, which is pretty big. So if you wanted to make it a little smaller, Let's just mess around with this here. Uh, you could make it lossy. So you're going to be sacrificing image quality here for file size, which I'll show you in a second. So you see at about, I don't know, 42% or 42. Um, our file size has gone down to 5.88 megabytes. But if I play the image, oh, it's also super duper fast. But it is a little grainy. Um, so if, I don't know, if you wanted to put it online or something, maybe you could live with this. Uh, just by way of example, if I reduce the lossiness down to zero, and we go back up to 18 megabytes, uh, it's probably hard to tell here, but I can assure you it is less grainy. Anyways, that all said, this is a little faster than I prefer, so I'm going to cancel out of here. And I'm actually going to set the time of all of these frames. So I'm going to click the first one, and then shift-click the last one. And I'm going to click this little zero second drop down here. And I know from before that 0 0.1 seconds is too long uh, for my taste. So I'm going to choose Other, and I'm going to say 0 0.05. And I'll hit OK. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Go up to File, and say Export, and Save for Web. And I'm going to shrink this dialog box down even more so we can see the whole thing. Um, nope, maybe not. I think this is as small as it's going to get. But anyways, so now when I click the Play button to see, this is a nice pace uh, for me. Let's see, man, there's a lot of stuff in ahead. But anyways, so maybe we see we go down to the one side and then bounce back. And this will go on forever until the end of time or until you stop looking at it. Um, and I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to say save. And I'm just going to save this to my desktop. Let's call it brain.gif. Say save. And so now, if you want to look at your GIF, uh, we can minimize this. And let's just open up a web browser here. Actually, because if you just double click your file, it's just going to be static, at least in Windows Photo Viewer. Um, so we need to open it in a web browser. So if we just click and drag it into Firefox here, it'll take a second to load. But once it does, there we go. You'll have your nice animated GIF, which will bounce back and forth to your heart's content. And I just think this looks really cool. I mean, I don't know about you, but there's just something about a brain that just really excites me with the wonders of science. Anyways, I guess that's all for today. So I'll sign off as usual by saying you worked hard to get that data. And probably especially hard because an MRI is a lot of work and it's also very expensive. So uh, yeah, you worked, you worked hard to get that. So uh, why not work a little harder and make it look super neat inside Photoshop. Alright, that's all for today, folks. Thanks for watching, and I will see you all next time.